If there's very little information about what the product's made of, I can pretty much guarantee it's going to be an average product. You're listening to Thrive by Design, business, marketing, and lifestyle strategies for your jewelry brand to flourish and thrive. Let's get started. Welcome to the Thrive by Design podcast, episode number 79. Today, I am super thrilled to be here with a special guest from the Flourish and Thrive community. And if you didn't know already, this is Tracy Matthews speaking to you. I'm the Chief Visionary Officer over at Flourish and Thrive. And one of the questions we get all the time, or one of the frustrations that I hear from a lot of designers, is it's so hard to find materials, manufacturers, resources, when you're, especially when you're just starting out. But also, you know, sometimes we're looking for something tricky and I hate to say it, but a lot of vendors in the jewelry industry are not super internet savvy and they would do their their businesses a huge favor if they actually could get online. But a lot of times they don't have, you know, well-developed websites that are picking up SEO for search or, you know, even a really good web presence at all. So today I have a very super special guest on and her name is Tamara Schaffhauser, and she is the designer mastermind behind Gilded Gray Jewelry. And she had another collection before called Sheer Addiction Jewelry. She just rebranded. And Tamara was in our mastermind in 2016, and she was always such a bright light and super helpful when sourcing topics came up. So I asked her to be on the show today to talk a little bit about the sourcing secrets that are going to save you a lot of sanity from and some serious time from someone who is really good at sourcing. Tamara has a passion for sourcing, which I think is interesting because she actually loves doing it. And I, I think it's the worst thing in the world. So it's pretty cool because she actually really loves doing it. And so she wanted to share some of her just like super simple hacks to help you find things easier online or uh, other ways when you're trying to source new product or materials or small quantities for your business and then some tips for those of you who are trying to grow as well. So it's gonna be a super awesome episode. I already know because I recorded this intro after we did the interview. And before we get started, I wanted to do just a little formal introduction of Tamara. Tamara Schaffhauser of Gilded Gray collects and restores aged brass and gold plated pieces sourced from Paris and New York and then adds her own stylish point of view. There's always a touch of irreverence and she mixes materials and layers new ideas over antique details. The result is gorgeous jewelry that is wearable well into the 21st century. So Tamara obviously has a really amazing collection of jewelry. She's a really talented designer. But also we've put together a sourcing checklist for you, which is super cool. So we've curated this checklist. You can head on over to the show notes over at flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash episode 79. That's flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash episode 79 to grab that checklist and download for some free sourcing tips, which for those of you who struggle with sourcing, you're going to love it. All right, let's dive right into the interview. Today, I am thrilled because I have a very special guest on the show today. A couple weeks ago, I interviewed one of our designers in the Flourish and Thrive community, and now I decided to do the same thing again. And it's going to be sort of a mission of mine to get some insights from people who've already done it. So this week, I have a very special guest on the show, Tamara Schaffhauser of Gilded Gray. And I'm thrilled to have Tamara because she is has not only been in the Flourish and Thrive Academy Mastermind, she graduated from our 2016 Mastermind, but she is also an expert at sourcing. And I'm so excited to have her on because one of the things and the questions and comments and inquiries that we always get is like, how do you find resources when a lot of these suppliers don't have websites or (laughs) they're not online? So Tamara, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thrilled to be here. Oh my gosh. So we're going to have fun today because we're going to talk all about sourcing. It's going to be a great call. But before we dive in, I would love to hear or for you to share with our listeners a little bit more about your journey, about your jewelry brand, and why you're obsessed with sourcing. Absolutely. And thanks for having me again. Well, one, love being here because obviously had such a great experience in the mastermind and getting to know everyone and getting to know you so well. So, and all that great stuff it's done for my business as well. So thank you. And thank you for asking me to do this. My pleasure. Um, <laughs> 
far as my journey, it has been a, like most, I think I've been in the business for a long time, almost 15 years and started completely in a different spot than I am now, but um, it all ended up in the right spot. So it was great. Um, I started out, I actually lived in Switzerland for about 10 years, um, worked for Johnson and Johnson and for a golf clothing line and had moved back to the States and um, was looking for something for me to do. I had little kids at the same time. And believe it or not, I started out with wine charms. Um, if anybody remembers those. Oh my gosh, I totally had those. Are you kidding? I probably had yours. <laughs> and um, crazy thing was, and this is part of my uh, sourcing journey actually, is um, I had a good friend and um, they we sent those into um, Neiman Marcus catalog. And at that time, obviously, there was, wasn't much on the web whatsoever. So um, it was all catalog work. Sent those in and they ended up in the Christmas book. And not having sourced what I was supposed to be sourcing prior to sending in the design, I ended up on a plane and uh, on my way to New York trying to figure out how am I going to come up with all this product I'm going to need to make this account work. And I was really green and didn't know what I was doing. But I learned a lot, a lot from that experience. And it was great. It um, kind of got me into the world of making jewelry with the parts and pieces that I was finding in addition to that. And I had another friend send one of the pieces I was making off to um, a hairdresser who happened to be the hairdresser for Ryan Seacrest. Oh, cool. And that ended up on American Idol with him and some other stuff. So I found myself kind of in business both times by accident, but also by, you know, staying open and kind of going for the projects as they came up. And so from there, I ended up building a line and starting in the business. I had a small um, studio retail walk-in area for quite a while, number of years. And then I've been online ever since. So it's been a kind of a journey, but it's... A journey. Amazing. So um, I'm curious, do you know what episode American Idol you were on? I was on the second one. So the second it was, one. Oh, yeah. I think my stuff was on it on the third to like oh, oh, seventh is- season. Okay. When was David Cook on it? You were a Carrie Underwood season? Yeah, or no, the season before, I was um, Ruben Stutter and... Oh. Um, yeah, I think I was, like, after Carrie Underwood. So maybe, like, the fourth or the fifth. Oh, my God, that would have been so fun if we were on the same episode. We, sh- we could find a screenshot of, like... Okay, so you kind of talked about how, like, your journey into sourcing. You were really obsessed with sourcing because of this journey that you had to take with finding these wine charms or making this product that you had sent to Neiman Marcus, and that's that's really cool. Is there anything else that's, like, sort of got you even more obsessed with it or is that sort of end of story? I think the one other thing other than just the true sourcing of the product and making sure was the the really like keeping your eye open for different and unique. I mean my brand is and even and the things that I make, I do a lot of one of a kinds as well. And constantly having my eye on something that's a little different, something that's a little out of the box and something that sets me apart a bit. I had gone I was lucky enough to be um, at a flea market in Paris and ran across some metal corners to mirrors from the 1800s and because they were you needed four of them they only had three available so they weren't using restoration and I ended up getting my hands on those and working those into some jewelry pieces so it's been a constant you know just how can I look at what's available from a different point of view and also digging to find those things and again just to set the brand apart a little bit so that it keeps its own flavor the way I would like to have it so okay so cool Okay, so there's a lot of designers just starting out who have no clue about where to find suppliers. And they're buying things, you know, not from traditional, like maybe wholesale suppliers, or they're buying them like double retail or like at a bead shop, and they're starting to grow their brand and they want to, you know, expand beyond just the basic things that they can actually find. So, especially for those who are just starting out, it can be a bit of a challenge to find good wholesale deals on small quantities. So what are some ways to source small amounts of findings or materials if you're just starting out or especially if you're starting out? Sure, absolutely. Um, I would say, you know, one of the most obvious places that a lot of people go, and I think rightly so, is Etsy. Yeah. (laughs) As far as jumping on Etsy and being able to find um, very small quantities of items at reasonable prices, obviously because it's so competitive there. So if it's a matter of, you know, as your business is being set up, obviously you're going to want to have a wholesale number and yeah. you know, um, setting up your business correctly anyway. But if you're just, you know, brand, brand new and you really just need very small quantities just to get samples together or started, obviously that's a really quick and easy way to um, 
get small amounts in the door. I would say as far as um, online sources, when um, even one of your preferred vendors, Halstead, um, you know, a, a company like that, which some of these are very easy to Google, a Fire Mountain mm -hmm. Gems, some of these others, as soon as you have your wholesale number, I mean, their minimums may be zero. <laughs> it's yeah. really just taking the time to just fill the form out and, you know, get in contact with whoever it is that, you know, you need to get the information from and just set up two, maybe three um, accounts with online sources that will let you buy for small amounts. And like I said, that not every wholesale account is going to require you to buy hundreds of dollars. No. You know, you want to start with somebody that's reputable, obviously. And some of the major ones that are online that even do require a wholesale account are going to give you some really good pricing and some really solid product. So if you haven't, you know, set up your number or whatever yet, I would say definitely probably Etsy is a really good spot just to grab small amounts without paying full, full retail because their pricing is great. Otherwise, get a couple of, you know, get a couple of those filled out and get them under your belt. Awesome. Awesome. So I have a couple of other questions for you that I'm going to ask you a little bit later, sort of related to that, but I think I'm going to ask you something else first. So sure. let's say like you're trying to get like really specific, like let's say you're trying to find a particular kind of jump ring or something like really specific. What are some tips for locating them on the internet when it can be so overwhelming to actually find stuff like that? It can, isn't it? It's, it can go from an hour and then four yeah. hours later. I know, right? You're, you're in the off. rabbit hole else and you have no idea how you ended up there absolutely I get that um, one trick that I use and I use it a lot is um, go to for example say jump rings maybe I'll jump on just a major retailer for example fire mountain or gems or something and the easiest way to do it is decide what size you need obviously based on your you know what you're making and your gauge and your metal you're gonna need so click through their chart find you know exactly what the description is take that description and then throw it up in your google you know oh. and google it because the difference being if you type in jump rings you're now it's just insane i mean it's impossible to narrow it down so if you go with an industry standard very tight description to start with from six millimeters sterling silver 20 gauge and you put that in now when you google i what i would I think the easiest, easiest thing to do is then um, instead of looking at all of the um, results pulled up, go to shopping and click the shopping button, which is right next to where your image button would be on the. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. And when that opens up, what you're going to see is the price, the picture of what the item actually is. And that'll discount half of them for you right there, because you can tell pretty quickly, even in the quality of the pictures, if the company's reputable or not. And it's also going to give you at the bottom when you hover over each picture, you're going to see the company name. And so it's just a really good way to immediately narrow it down to about 20 options. And once you go from there, then you click on that item, you're actually going to that item, you're not going into the site and digging again. So it really um, helps. It truly awesome. helps narrow it down. Yeah. So what if you're looking for something really rare, you could do the same thing probably. Absolutely. Like I if you're looking for like a specific kind of, I'm always looking for rose cut diamonds. It's so hard because then you're like finding someone in India. I'm like, I don't need like a six millimeter diamond from India. Like how can, like, let's say I was trying to find like a specific, like a champagne, like uh, round six millimeter rose cut diamond in New York City. Like how would I just put all that in Google or? Honestly, I would. I would start there. And then I think, you know, and, and without doing it, I can't say right off the top of my head, but um, for that specific question, but 90% of the time, you're going to end up with the same five or six sources are going to start popping up for New over York. And over. Okay. And you're going to know right away that is the option or those are the, you know, they're probably yeah. bigger, you know, industry leaders that, you know, reputable that you're going to want to go with. Um, but the more specific you can get with that first one and using industry standards. I just think a lot of people just kind of type in findings. Well, it's, oh my gosh, That's it's just huge. overwhelming. And to have, and like I said, if you go to the shopping page too, just to have the pricing right there, because you're going to see automatically, you can have 25 jump rings for $5 or whatever it may be. And you can eliminate so quickly. It'll save you a ton of time. And I think in that scenario too, you're going to see the similar co companies over and over and over, and you're going to start to get a really quick sense of who's providing what. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that's cool. And then also, like, probably a smart move would be to 
document who those companies were so that you don't have to go through this process again <laughs> if you're looking for the same thing or something similar because then you start building a list of resources. Absolutely. And, if, and you know what, if you're somebody who like can't handle filling out the spreadsheet or getting all that information right away, just start screenshotting yeah. them at least. You know, make a folder with screenshots. It'll save you so much time. And save it in Ever- Evernote or Google Drive file or something. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so um, I love talking about collection development. In fact, I just got off a call right before this with one of our new mastermind designers talking about collection development for them. So I wanted to ask you, like, in your experience, because I, you know, I've done both, designed the piece yeah. first or found the materials first. Right. Is there like a, is there a better way to do it, to design, you know, the piece first and then try to find the materials or vice versa? Because, you know, you always hear that dreaded problem coming up, like, I designed this piece and now I can't find the component. <laughs> it's a real challenge. <laughs> I have always usually found the piece first, then designed. That's just kind of how my mind works. I think when I see something, it triggers a design idea, and then I can go that way with it. It also really, really um, helps because I know immediately how much is available, whatever that thing is that I'm looking at. I know about how much are avail- how many are available. I know if that's enough for the project that I'm looking to design for. And it does, if you go the back way and do it that way, it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of time. I mean, if you are really, you know, have something in your mind and you want to do it, I I think it's great. I just think you do know that it's going to take a little more research and a little more digging to kind of pair those two together. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. So, okay, so I've done this before. Like, you, you kind of want to identify, like, how many you can potentially get and see if it's even worth it. But like, what if you are working with a supplier, they're like, oh, there's plenty of in stock. And so you buy like a sample lot and then all of a sudden you go to buy for production and it's gone. Right. And you are going to scream. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this can't be happening. Um, That struggle is real. (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) In an ideal world, I would say for sure you had two sources. You know, yeah. just in case because it does happen. You know, even your suppliers, they're getting things often from somewhere. So they can't always 100% control that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's good to know that. But I definitely try. And when I go, if I am going to um, design, first of all, I'm getting my sample. That sample I won't have committed yet to until I know how many I have, you know, how many I'm yeah. going to need. Okay. And what the project's going to require. So it again, it's a little bit of um, doing a tiny bit of work ahead of time. is going to save you a lot of heartache on the back end. Okay, awesome, awesome. So let's talk about quality because mm-hmm. it's sometimes hard to find a reputable list. And, you know, like we all want to find like unique suppliers and stuff like that. But do you think, is there some sort of uh, benchmark to determine um, where to find the best quality for, for sourcing and uh, how to do that? Um, I think one thing that I use a lot is when, Um, whether it's a big wholesaler I'm dealing with or if it's an online source, if there's very little information about what the product's made of, I can pretty much guarantee (laughs) it's going to be an average product, a very average product. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. If you're looking for like, if you need back the jump ring thing, if if you need it like a 16 gauge jump ring for some heavy duty bracelet or something you have, you know, unique, you really need to go to a source that's going to have the listings of what the gauges are, what the finishes are. They should have, um, definitely, they should have, you know, a map of how those work or what you can look at or questions that you can, you know, ask about the plating. Um, I constantly have found when I have ordered from a site where even though the picture even looked like a better quality and they didn't have the information on there, it, the reason it's not on there is because it's it's pretty basic. <laughs> or it sucks. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Have you ever had it been in a situation where you've had to like send something back and you had a problem with it? Yep, more than once. Again, that was normally when I wasn't dealing with some of the suppliers that I've built relationships with. Okay, yeah. So, you know, and I, what I will tell you, I've even sent chain back that um, I didn't think the plating came out well on from a very good supplier and they were amazing about it. Yeah. So I bet that two huge difference you know building this relationship with a uh, supplier talking to them directly getting a contact name knowing you know who you're talking to when you're calling to order and calling that person every time you go to order they'll actually call me now 
constantly and say, oh, really? we got something new in, That's we awesome. have new plating, you know, we have this going on. And that just saves me so much time because they, you know, we've built a relationship over time. But I think don't be afraid to send things back if the quality is not right. I mean, that's inventory and stock that you're going to have to carry otherwise. Yeah. And um, I think it's important that you, you know, use that money towards the items you actually want. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So here's another question that I think is really, really important because we want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and making sure that we're like working with the right kinds of people. Yep. So what are some of the questions to ask like vendors or suppliers or manufacturers when you're, you're considering working with them for a new collection line or, or to buy product from them? Sure. First thing I always do, I mentioned this just a few minutes ago, is um, get a contact name, somebody that I know that I can talk to every time I call. <laughs> and I call a lot. I call all these places a lot versus just emailing or ordering online and waiting to see what's going to happen. I actually get on the phone and call them a lot. There's a lot of really good suppliers that aren't very mobile friendly still. You know, they're just oh, yeah. it's not online and they're they're pretty old school still. And um, their quality is amazing. They're just, you know they might be second, third generation companies that they just haven't built out their websites yet. It's so crazy to me because websites are so cheap these days. You could just buy a template site. Yeah. And it I, like you know, blows my mind that people don't. It totally blows my mind. And I think they get overwhelmed by the amount of product they have and how they're going to list it. But yeah. I'm like, really help us out here. This would be great for all of us out here searching, you know, if we could see more online, just not everybody can jump in the, on a plane and go to New York and source everything, you know, pounding the streets. But one other thing I was going to say is get samples. Oh, sample, sample, samples. Every, you know, whenever you're going to start with a new vendor and there's something that you're looking for particular, and again, whether it's as basic as jump rings and clasps and chain or whatever it may be, ask for samples, ask for plating samples. And I think too, even if they won't send them free, pay the shipping just to look at the samples because it's going to save you so much heartache in the long run versus going ahead and ordering, thinking it's going to be okay, and then having to go through everything that it's going to take to undo that. So yeah, anytime you can get samples in first, do. <laughs> if you're if you're at the Tucson trade show, oh my gosh, sample, 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 grab everything you can get. I know, right? Seriously. Yeah, baby, label it. Grab your, um, grab the cards, you know, the business cards and um, keep, you know, the more samples you can get, the better it's going to be. So there's a couple of ways of to approach this uh, sourcing, right? You can do your like Google search, uh, yeah. try to find people online. You can also like find them on Etsy, right? For like, you know, before you're, when you're just starting out maybe. And then you you can also walk trade shows, like get a list of the bead and button shows or the gem shows or, you know, any sort of manufacturing show that's close to your area and pull cards. I mean, this is like so old school, but I feel like you still need to do it sometimes because that's the best way to get the most amount of suppliers. Are there any other ways that you have found or like any ninja ways that you found people? Um, there's one other. I mean, the other would be your um, larger, like the MJSA yeah. sites and some of those. You go to their sites. They have some resource guides. And when you get in those, they're in. I mean, there's a lot of information there of different suppliers, um, what they're working. And you can drill down a lot of those by um, city by state, you know, they're all set up that way. So you can get really in-depth information about maybe something local that you don't know about. I have a local company very close to me that actually they were, they're online. I knew of them. I had worked with them. I didn't even realize they were so close. So now I can actually go there. There, another great thing that I've done that's worked really well too, is if you're on one of those sites and you go to their Facebook, I mean, I always, that it's another great source. Be sure to you know get on their Facebooks or their Instagrams because there's a lot of additional information there. But when you do do that, on the right hand side, you're going to see people who also like or liked by this page, and there's going to be a ton of other resources of that similar company that you can just dig through right there too. So it's a really easy way to find an additional source just by being on the company's Facebook page. Oh, that's awesome. Yep, I love that. Okay, so we talked a little bit about, I mean, we, we mentioned rose cut diamonds, but if we're looking for like, you know, beyond like bridge or costume, um, right. like, and we're sort of searching for fine jewelry, do you have any tips on that, fine jewelry findings or materials? I think there's a lot of these companies do both. They can do some base metal stuff okay. and obviously they can do some fine jewelry stuff. Yeah. But if you're looking, you know, for the, as far as the diamond stones and the higher end, I would probably start out 
personally going straight over to like the Society of North American Goldsmiths Mm -hmm. or to one of these um, AGTA source directories and start there. I mean, there are companies that and groups that work with fine jewelry, jewelry findings, they're um, reputable, you know, they're established because of the price point, I probably wouldn't just take my chance on something online without having researched it. <laughs> yeah. And then from there, honestly, if I found a company that looks great, I'd probably get on the phone again, call them up, start talking to them, find out who they service, what their terms are, you know, what their minimums are, how they work. Yeah, that's a, that's a great tip. Those show guides that you get um, from those organizations are pretty, pretty insane. They are. And like I said, I, ca- I cannot tell you how many times I'm looking at a company, but on the side or link to it or somewhere are 10, uh, 10 more companies similar that were that's where I actually end up finding the one supplier that I really click with. So can you explain that like a little bit? Explain that again. Sure. Um, so say you're on Facebook yeah. and you typed in um, MJSA okay, yeah. and you're on their Facebook page. Oh, and it's like companies like them. Right. So if you look to the right and with Facebook, with Facebook and all the way they're running, you know, they do ads and everything now. It's actually a great help. Um, on the right hand side, you'll see people also like. So it's similar. The people also like. Okay, that's mm-hmm. right. So they're off, they're looking for other companies. They'll be listed there, and then liked by this page are going to be a lot of industry people who <laughs> are in the same industry, you know, in the same business, and they'll be listed there. So you can kind of start clicking through there too. That's such a good tool. You know, it's interesting. I took a Facebook ads training like years and years ago, and that was one of the strategies that they, yeah. they use to target audiences, which is so funny because like I never would have thought of that for sourcing. It's brilliant. Yeah, no, it's just, it saves me so much time. I can't even, I can't even tell you. That is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. So do you have any um, like ninja final sourcing tips for our listeners today? You know, another good one that actually I didn't even talk about was um, Yelp, which I wouldn't think oh my that, gosh. that I would throw out there. I can't even tell you. For New York alone, if you get on Yelp, you won't even believe the amount of information there and the reviews. And that's a great one, too. I mean, getting in there and looking at the reviews, it's a, it's unbelievable, um, you know, whether it's something they actually, you know, a specific product that they ordered and their or half the time it's more about the customer service how their um experience was how the product was delivered so it's really helpful oh that's amazing okay so cool so after this episode we're going to be creating a really great download for you guys our sourcing checklist that tomorrow is helping me put together so you can head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash sourcing checklist that's flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash sourcing checklist tomorrow thank you so much for being here today where can people find you thank you i appreciate it um i'm at www.gildedgray.com awesome and we'll link that in the show notes as well and what were you going to say where can they find you on social media email me anytime okay perfect perfect <laughs> yeah. do you want to announce your email on, on the public platform or do um, you just, just go to your website just go to my website you'll find it there <laughs> okay perfect thank you so much and i'm excited to explore this sourcing topic a little bit more me too have a great day thank you Thank you so much for listening to the show today. Wasn't that great? Tomorrow's so awesome. So once again, I just want to remind you, you can download our sourcing checklist over at flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash episode 79. That's flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash episode 79. And thank you so much once again for listening to the show today. As always, I had a blast recording this for you. So enjoy and share this with your friends. If you're loving the podcast, make sure that you rate and review it and tell us what you think. All right, you guys, this is Tracy Matthews signing off until next time.